In this first lesson, I just wanted to quickly give you a, a few pointers and core fundamental pieces of information that you'll need to understand when adding wireless technology to your product. To start with a larger range, so the more operating range of the wireless technology and the higher the bandwidth or higher the data rate, then the higher the power. And I think that's pretty intuitive to most people that if it has to send a signal further and it has to send more data in a certain amount of time, then that's probably going to co correlate to higher power consumption and that is exactly correct. And this is important because obviously higher power consumption equals either a larger battery or a lower battery life. And that's always a compromise. So a lot of this is going to be a compromise between range, uh, bandwidth, and, and power consumption. And then power consumption is going to be a trade-off between either adding a bigger battery or accepting a lower battery life. This is why you always want to select a wireless technology that has the minimum required range and bandwidth for your particular application. So if you were just sending, uh, let's just say uh, you have a sensor that just has a uh, very small amounts of data that it needs to send and it only needs to send it, say, uh, a few meters away, then you probably wouldn't want to use something like Wi-Fi because that's going to be too power hungry because of the high uh, bandwidth and the data rate that it's capable of. And you also wouldn't want to go with a cellular technology because you're just operating over short distances. So you don't need, uh, you don't want a cellular technology that's going to consume more power and have more cost than what you, uh, what you need. So that's why you want to be very specific in the technology that, that you select to make sure that it matches up with your specific applications or your specific application. Another, just a general suggestion in general with wireless technology is in almost all cases, your, your best option is to use a pre-certified module. So instead of custom designing a, a, let's say a Bluetooth, that is probably the most common wireless technology. So instead of custom designing a Bluetooth radio on your PCB or your printed circuit board, in that case, you would have a, a Bluetooth a system on a chip, so just a chip, and then you would have a, an antenna and the routing between the antenna. In almost all cases, that's not something you're going to want to do. The, the, the main reasons being is that's going to complicate your cert FCC certifications process if you're going to sell the product in the U.S., and it just adds design complexity. Wireless Technology can be complex, and if it's not done correctly, then you're gonna you're gonna waste a lot of time and money trying to get that correct. So it's much better if you can just find a, a module that already exists, and this module would be a module that you then solder onto your board. So in most cases, it would include the full the radio, the the system on a chip, and in most cases, it's uh, preferred if you can get that has a built in antenna already. That's not always feasible if you're, especially if you're looking for long, you know, really long range, then you're not going to be able to just get by with a, a board antenna. But for something like Bluetooth or Wi-Fi, those can, you can buy modules that have the antenna built in. And these will typically either be a PCB antenna. So you'll just see like a, a, a snake, a, a kind of a wiggly snake shaped line serpentine on the module. That would be a PCB antenna, or it may have a, a ceramic chip antenna, which looks just like a small capacitor, but it's an antenna and you'll see it's placed usually away from the system on a chip itself. And always, anytime you're adding wireless functionality to your product, you need to take into mind the FCC certification requirements. And I'll discuss that somewhat in this course, but for really mo all the details on FCC certification requirements, then there's a, another course in the academy that just talks about certifications. And that's the course where I I go into a lot of uh, detail, but you, it's always a, a fundamental part of adding wireless technology is understanding the FCC certification implications of adding that technology. And then just some uh, basic terminology, All the, most of the technologies that we're going to be looking at here can be either classified as peer-to-peer. -peer. So a peer-to-peer -peer wireless connection is basically one device connected directly to another device. Uh, most common example is, let's say you have a, a Bluetooth speaker 
that you connect your that you pair your phone to listen to music, that's a peer-to-peer -peer connection. So it's just your phone communicating directly with the speaker, vice versa, a two-way connection in most cases, and but there's no other devices involved. And that has in certain applications, that's a, a good technology, but it's also limited in other applications. And that's where other applications may require what's called a mesh network. And a mesh network is essentially where you have lots of devices connected together. So for instance, if let's say you have a device, we'll call it device A and device C that are separated let's just say by an arbitrary distance of 100 meters. So a peer-to-peer -peer would go, device A would communicate directly with device C and it would go back and forth and any signals would have to travel that full 100 meter distance. But with mesh networking, you can have intermediate devices. So you could have a device B that is located halfway between device A and device C. And in that case, if device A wants to send a message to device C, it would route that or relay through it through the middle device B. So if you have A and C are 100 meters apart and then you have device B right in the middle, now the maximum distance that a signal has to uh, be transmitted is only 50 meters. So mesh not only allows you to connect a lot of devices together, it can also lower the distance that you actually have to transmit or your operating range requirements. And as we already discussed, a higher operating range equals higher battery life. So in some applications, you can use a mesh network in order to basically increase the, the operating range of the entire mesh network without minimum maximum or increasing the range of any particular node. And then that just allows you to either well lower your, your power consumption, which can then mean either using a smaller battery or increasing your battery life. Okay, that's a just a, a quick uh, overview. I just wanted to touch on some of these fundamental points that don't really uh, match up with any of the specific technologies that we're going to be discussing. The rest of this course, ex except for lesson 11, where it's a, a summary and final suggestions, everything is going to be, uh, from this point on, we're going to be specifically talking about specific wireless technologies. And most of these points here that I wanted to make are universal and apply to all of the te technologies that we'll be looking at.